all the way of thinking where we said that I'm going to be the one who makes the judgment calls. I'm going to do this. I'm going to base morality upon what I think. And he puts on his righteousness. And when we look at the righteousness of God, it is pure. It is holy. It is unflawed. When we look at Righteousness and the imputation of righteousness. I have a big long definition in there to begin with of what the imputation of righteousness is, but the simplified version of it is this the imputation of righteousness, it is a gift of God that cannot be earned or obtained through works. You get that? It is a gift of God that cannot be obtained or earned through works. It is only available because of the work that Christ performed on the cross. It is a legal act through which righteousness, God declares an unrighteousness, unrighteous individual righteous through the death of his only son. The righteousness which we have is not based upon anything we did, but is a legal act based upon solely what Christ did on the cross. And it is given to the it is dependent upon an individual's relationship with Christ and it is given to the individual at the moment of salvation and it is theirs to maintain. Get that? To maintain. Not something that's there and you can go and sin and do whatever you want it, but it is theirs to maintain forever. It is through the righteousness only that God can accept mankind as being righteous. Thus it is mankind only way to accept, be accepted by God as righteous. What is that saying? When we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins, God takes away our filthy rags, our own morality, our way of thinking, what we deem is right in our own eyes, and he gives us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not through works. It is a gift. Something that we have to receive is nothing that we can obtain. Because if it was through works, we would boast. But it is a free gift. It is something that covers us legally under the law of God. And it is ours to maintain. And it is only because of the work that Christ did on the cross that we can have it in the first place. But it's not our righteousness. It's God's righteousness. Which means... Remember when we talk about the Old Testament, how they had to offer up a sacrifice for sin, and then they had to place it on the mercy seat. And when God looks down upon the mercy seat, if the blood was implied, he saw straight through the mercy seat, straight to the law, and he saw judgment. But when he saw the blood of the sacrifice, he saw, no longer saw the law and saw judgment, but he then saw grace. Why? Because things were done the way that he said. That is exactly what it is. It is no different. We accept Jesus Christ into our heart. And we get rid of those filthy rats. Our way of thinking. And we take on God's righteousness. And we maintain that righteousness. How do we maintain it? Through reading and studying the word of God. Through prayer. Why do we do that? Because in order to maintain the breastplate of righteousness, to, to maintain the righteousness of God, we can only maintain it through God's way, through his word. Because when we try to maintain God's righteousness in ourselves, we go back once again to the book of Judges, and we are doing everything that is right in our own eyes, and then we are polluting the righteousness of God because we are the ones making the judgment call of what is right and what is wrong. And we have taken that from God's hands. Does that make sense? I know I said a lot. I know I went deep. But does that make sense? It is no longer us making the judgment calls. It is no longer us deciding what is wrong. But we are basing our decision upon what is right and what is wrong upon God's word and God's word alone. Because in the end, he is the one that is going to be judging us. Because he is the only fair and just judge.
And I'm going to stop there for the sake of time. But does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to ask? As long as, and it's because we are allowing God to tell us what is right and wrong. We're not making the decisions ourselves. The word of God is Jesus Christ. It is a living word. And as long as you follow it, you can never go wrong. You can never go wrong. But that's because we are allowing God to make the judgment call. We're not making the judgment call. Did you have anything to say? Or no, I was wondering if it's some battery you're making in your family life. Like if your wife and I are you deciding about something or discussing something, you should actually take it to the look at the Bible and take it and then see what God has to say about it. You should do that with absolutely anything possible. Now, people can take that to extremes. I'm told, my father in law tells me of a gentleman who he went to Bible school with, that you would find him in the court or court, courtyard praying over the vending machine. God, give me what color, whatever flavor soda you want me to have today. You know, that's a little extreme. But if you're trying to make a judgment call between something that's going to affect what is right and what is wrong, that's going to affect your relationship with God, her relationship with God, that is something you need to dive into the Word of God. See, what does the Word of God say? What does God instruct us to do? As long as it lines up with the Word of God. Pray about it. See what God says. See what, it, exactly. It's what the Word of God says. If it's, I've heard people say already, though, um, I was listening to one preacher where somebody was saying that, well, I messed up. I married her when I was in a sinner, when I was a sinner, and you know what? She's not the one that God had for me, so I need to get a divorce and marry this one. That is against the Word of God. That is not, does not line up. That is not Bible. That is not righteousness. That is not what God desires. When the two become one, that's it. God does not like divorce. He hates divorce. You see that throughout the word of God. It was only based upon the hardness of his heart, a man's heart, that Moses permitted it. But just different things like that. If the word of God says something on it, go by the word of God. God, the word of God is the final judgment call for absolutely everything. What's that? I said what you just said there came to my mind a couple times. But you know, does that make does that answer to my degree? wife? You know, uh, we got married young. You know, did you make a mistake or you know, it comes to my mind, I beat myself up with that a lot, that question a lot. Well, but when you go to the word, you go to the you got to keep it, and we even talk. God is clear. Absolutely, brother. But for the person who has not done that, the word of God is also clear that yeah. that the individual who is saved is supposed to pray for the spouse who is not saved. It never said divorce, and it said pray for the one that isn't saved. Absolutely. But when we make any judgment call, it comes down to what does the word of God say? That's absolutely everything. Because when we don't, then we get off on our own and we start doing what is right in our own eyes and our righteousness becomes corrupted because we're not doing things based on the Word of God. Anybody else before you? Don't want to treat your wife like a used car. Pray to men every so many years. Absolutely. Don't treat her that way. But for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and wrap her up and we'll close it down. Get ready for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we give you all praise and glory for who you are, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he so chooses. I pray, Lord, that you would just anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word today, anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your words. Anoint the song leader and the musicians as they lead us in the songs you have us to sing, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. And let our minds and our hearts be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to follow on, that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that it will take root in our heart. 
that we may apply to our life and be that we may grow even more in you in the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ, that we may be even farther transformed to the very image of Jesus. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus.